Welcome back to Liberty Marksman. I'm Ken. And I'm Scott. And today we're talking to an alternative to the clamshell style and pin style vice blocks. We're talking about the Clay Zion barrel tool. It's a spline. And it's about half the price of the guys of the reaction rod. And it does the same damn job. So let's check it out. Let's put this in the device let's get it going. And I just happen to have a barrel to change. Look at that. If you've been watching for a while, you know Scott and I had picked up some uppers at the NRA show. This upper happened to be a uh, 300 Blackout SPR. Well, unfortunately, that's set up for a suppressor. Well, I got such a smoking deal on it. It's billet. It's got the integrated handguard. The problem is, I can't have a uh, SPR in this state and can't have a suppressor yet. We're Did you working say SPR on that. or SBR? You know what I mean. Okay. SBR. Just check it. I have an SPR. So, I got to change the barrel out and I got to work in the handguard because this thing, I want to show them, is actually bolted on and it's torque. This handguard. Receiver has actually got a larger section that your handguard actually goes on to. Now if you wanted to buy this handguard for a standard upper, your barrel nut becomes much larger. But this upper receiver is actually specific to this handguard. Sorry. Let's check it out. The cool thing about this is, is the, um, how this locks into the barrel. And it makes for very, very solid platform to work with. Let's see, I've got the barrel right here. And we'll show you up close how the barrel locks into the spline. Do you want to go show them that? Exactly where your bolt locates into your barrel. And it'll actually hold that rigid while it's in that vise so that you're not tweaking your upper in any way shape or form. It'll actually free float over the top of the tool. Yep, it goes in exactly the way the bolt goes in the upper receiver. And the best part of using this type of system is, you know, we, we like to coat, we sear coat, and we have some of our older rifles are Duracoated, and both the finishes are very durable, but you still run the risk of scratch. And the pin style, problem is you're torquing against your damn, where your takedown pins go. You, you elongate I, that and you're opening up slop in your upper receiver to lower receiver fit. I just never thought cl clamping on your upper is a good idea. Anyway, I never did. No, you're it's not, a horseshit design. You're not filling that void up or anything, and yeah, it's just, uh, I don't like it. I would much rather hold the piece that I'm tightening against, and you know what? This is the perfect way to do it. Yeah, and the best part is I can insert it here. I can work on it here. And when I need to turn it, I can work on it here. It works good for... Mounting scopes, it works good for um, doing any anything you need to bolt on or take off on your upper receiver. Dude, we ain't getting paid to sell the damn thing. Let's get the damn thing apart and let's show them how to do it. Let's get it apart. See, the best part is I can rotate it, lock it back in, and continue on. So I'm not, I don't have to loosen the clamp up and, uh, you know, reposition it that way. Because you really can't. You can only do it. With the clamp side, you can only do it 180 degrees from each other. Where here, I can go anywhere the spline will lock in and it holds it firm. And you'll see here in a second, when we go to actually take the barrel nut off, you're not, you're not stressing any of this. Just about a second, you're going to be able to see how the... Uh the upper receiver is specific for this handguard as soon as he gets it off. And the way they do this system, I mean, that's about as solid as it gets. I'm going to zoom in on that. The whole handguard is it integrated in the upper receiver. But this video isn't about that, it's about this tool. So, I'm gonna pop a gas block off, get the set screws on the bottom, here again, I can just rotate it in and I can see that clear as day. Now we're gonna use a maintenance guy's 
favorite tool, the crescent wrench. I hate to use a crescent wrench, but uh, all my snap-on wrenches have flink drive, and I really don't want to gouge up the nut, so this is perfect for that. Get the nut loose. It'll come right off. And then, obviously, when I pop the barrel off, it's going to come out of the splines, which is fine because the upper receiver will still sit here because it's exactly where the bolt rides. So I don't have to worry about that. Get this barrel out of here. That's it. So now we're going to put the new one in. I'm actually going to go ahead and just put a thin bead of oil here just because it'll make it. They got a really snug fit on these. Um, if it's too snug, sometimes you got to heat the upper receiver, throw it in the oven, or whatever your method of heating it is, just to open up the tolerances a bit, which is good. That keeps everything nice and tight. So, I'll go ahead and slide that off the spline just a little bit. Now I'll lock it back in the spline and we can put our barrel nut back on. with ours. I'm just going to go German for now. Good and tight! Because I'm going to run it and then drop it down and then I'll do my final uh, assembly. So, we've got that on. Um, Alright, so we got our gas block. We got our new gas tube on. And I want to have uh, him bring it in here so you can see. These Seekins barrels are actually dimpled, so when you slide this on, there's no guesswork of lining up the gas port. You'll be able to see through the set screw hole, set the one, set the other, good to go. Alright, that's good. Now we get to put the handguard so on. Put the handguard on this thing. And, um,. Like I said, the best part, this is a snug fit, which is good and it locks in, is now i got to put all the screws in. So, um, like I said earlier, the best part is I'm just going to start all of them. best part is, is I can rotate this thing and I don't have to loosen the vise to do it. And get those started, roll it in, lock it into the next spline, and... Uh, saves time and it's just a good firm work surface to work with. That's it. Got my handguard on. Now I can also go ahead and install my Seekins muzzle brake. And uh, it's great because I can do everything from right here. Thread the worry about undoing the vise, moving the clamshell. Other thing it's nice for is I can mount my optics on here. Nothing's blocking it, so if I want to set from going with a set of irons, I can go and get to my rear iron because it's not being blocked by the vise. And that and everything can be done right here. I, I sound like a little kid, but these things just work really well. Finally got the Seekins complete. I can't wait to shoot it. And with some help from this uh, barrel spline drive tool from Botox Tactical is who sells it. It's their house brand. And it's called Clay Zion. K-L-E-Y-Z-I-O-N. And we'll put a link to it. Yep. You know, maybe we seem a little, uh, well, we're both tool guys anyway. Yeah. But, um, so maybe we seem a little geeked out about this tool, but it just kicks ass. You know what? Uh, it makes working on the uppers a snap. And it... I'm not marring the surface or anything. I can rotate the damn thing without having to loosen the vise and, and re-clock. And you you know you can only go 180 degrees. So we, we've actually used it in another video for the uh, Midwest Industries rail install. Mm -hmm. You might not have, might have seen it then, but uh, you can tell that we use it because it is the best way to hold that barrel on, attach yep. it to your upper no and doubt. any other device that you're going to put, whether it be a brake or a flash hider, whatever. Yep. But it does, it works in a lot of different levels. So check it out. Yep. And now that he's finally got his done, we can finally do our Seekins comparisons. Yeah, we're going to do some uh, uh, target testing with it. And, you know, we have the Battle of Our Geisley Triggers that we had talked about before. I've got the Enhanced uh, 3 Gun, uh, Super 3 Gun Trigger. And I've got the Super 3 Gun. So the only difference is. Mine's got a flat face, his got a curved face. Never had a flat face before, so I'm interested to see how it's going to work. And we want to see if there's a di any difference in speed between the two. It would be hard to tell you, but we're going to use a shot timer and we're going to find out whether they do or not. I yep. hope you found this video informational, or at least got a good laugh at our expense. Yeah. Check us out on Instagram and Facebook. 
Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, don't take liberty for granted.